Hi everyone, this is Puya. Uh, continuing the topic of threes, now we're going to talk about um, a, a balanced uh, binary search tree called AVL trees. So first let's review what a binary search tree is. A binary search tree or BST for short is a binary tree with the following added requirements, with the following re uh, conditions. Each node stores a data element, uh, E, and the key, K. The key come from a totally ordered set, can be just integers, can be strings, can be characters, okay? And for each node, all keys in the left subtree of the node are going to be less than its own key, the, the node's key. And uh, all the keys in its right subtree are greater than or equal than its, um, its, the, its um, that node's key, right? So every node on the left subtree of the node would have key values smaller than the node itself. Uh, all the nodes on the right subtree, they would have the key values greater than or equal than the node itself. In most applications, we typically assume that all the keys in a binary search tree are distinct, so we don't have duplicates. Usually, like if if we want to include duplicates, we, we say that like we have a binary search tree with duplicates, right? And if you have duplicates, then it means that like in the right subtree uh, of the node, you would have um, all the nodes would have key values greater than or equal than the node key, the node's key itself. Okay. Um, the advantage of having a binary search tree is that if the tree is balanced, then every operation, like by every operation, we talk about searching, inserting, delete, deleting, it takes order of log n. Okay. Um, the problem or disadvantage is that the tree might get seriously unbalanced after you insert a new element to it, right? We learned in the previous video how to do insertion in a binary search tree or how to do deletion in a binary search tree, right? And we did like uh, also like the implementation of that, right? Um, but problem is that once you do insertion and deletion of nodes in a binary search tree, like even if the original tree is, if the, even if the original binary search tree is um, balanced, like after insertion, it might lose its balance, right? So, and why do you want to keep our uh, trees Balance the binary search tree. Why do we want to keep it balanced? We saw that because um, the order of insertion and deletion and search for a binary search tree is big O notation of its height, right? So we want to keep height as small as possible. In a balanced BST or in a balanced binary tree, the height would be. Um, of order log n would be equal to log n, floor of log n, right? So that's why we want to keep our binary search tree balanced, okay? So, uh, and the AVL trees are balanced binary search tree, height, height balanced binary search tree. Okay, so this is um, BSD example, right? So like you can see that, like we have strings here, Right. So if we consider the alphabetical order, or like you can also like think about these as um, like doubles, like you can the key value can be the double value or the string value. So for either of the cases, you can see that uh, all the nodes to the left subtree of the node uh, would have key values smaller than the node's key itself. And all the nodes to its right subtree, they would have key values which are greater than uh, the node's key itself. Okay, so like for strings, we consider 
alphabetical order but like for the um for the um uh so for the um sorry for the for the doubles like it's just going to be the value itself right here like you see that like if we consider the strings this is not a binary search tree right if we consider the string like it's not a binary search tree because of this case you can see that z is um uh, like comes after j in the alphabetical order but if we consider let's just like focus on the double values like let's focus on the double values if you focus double values you see that um, 3.7 is a smaller than 9.4 3.2 is a smaller 7 is a smaller 20.2 and 21 are bigger than 9.4 the same thing for this note uh, 3.2 is a smaller than 3.7 7 is greater than 3.7 here uh, for this note, 21 is greater than 20.2, right? So uh, this is an example of BSD if we consider the double values, okay? Um, all of these three examples are binary search trees, right? This is a full BSD. This is a complete BSD with five nodes, and this is a right skewed BST okay so um, this is balanced like every full um, BST is balanced as well this is not balanced this is like unbalanced or imbalanced and this one what like here like like if you want to see like uh, if this one is balanced or not right which it is uh, we have to define like what do we mean by balance right so in the AVL trees we define balance by the height of the sub left subtree and right subtree and the difference between them. Okay, so um, in a balanced binary search tree, right? In the worst case, the height like if if we if our tree is not balanced in the worst case, the height of the binary search tree is going to be n minus 1 so like this is the case for example you see that like here right the height in the worst case if you have seven nodes um, the height can be six so if you want to search or if you want to insert or if you want to delete right in this case uh, the big O notation for all of these three operations is going to be of order n because height can be n right so um, but if, if we make the height as small as possible, right, then all these operations can be done in the order of log n, okay, which is the case for this tree and this tree. You see that here we have five nodes, right? What is log of five in base two? It's two point something. The floor of that is two. And you see that the height of this tree is two. The same thing for this one, right? So now the insertion, searching, deletion uh, in the worst case, like for balanced BSTs can be done in the order of log N, okay? Um, so the goal is to keep the height of the binary search tree always um, like log N, right? Uh, so some examples of balanced binary search trees or some like categories of uh, like some different versions of balanced binary search trees are AVL trees or red black trees or other uh, balanced binary search trees in this video we're going to talk about AVL trees which are balanced binary search trees they are BSTs but they're also balanced they're height balanced okay um and we, we have to make sure that at after every insertion or deletion, still the BSD stays balanced, right? So that its height is still going to be log n. Um, ideally, we want to have a complete tree after every operation. This is like that, what we want to have ideally right so let's say like here 
if we insert 2 which is going to be inserted right here right as the right child of 1 right we have to like after we insert this one we want to make our tree something like this right? so like we we just like have to do some operations to uh, make sure that our tree is height balanced but it's not going to be very cost effective to make the tree perfectly balanced right but we can just like um, we can just like define a new criteria right which is like done on the AVL trees that um, we rebalance the tree after each insertion or delete deletion so that it's height balance like it keeps the height balance property okay what is the height balance property the height balance property is that we calculate the the um, the height of the left subtree of every node and the height of the right subtree of every node and if the difference between these two numbers is either 0 1 or negative 1 right that like if, if this property is valid for the a for all the nodes of a BST we call that BST an AVL tree okay so AVL trees are height balanced BSTs according to this criteria what do we mean by the height of a subtree we mean just the maximum number of edges to a leaf right so like the uh, the number of edges to the deepest leaf in the left subtree or the right subtree so that's how we can calculate the height of the left subtree or the height of the right subtree what why is it called AVL well just like named after um, the name of the people who um, invented this method right so um, this method makes sure that the BST trees are kept balanced after insertion or deleting nodes uh, it can be shown that the maximum height of an AVL tree is always going to be in the order of log n okay uh, it's not necessarily going to be complete right but its height is always going to be of uh, log n right or order of log n if a tree is an empty tree we let its height to be minus one okay so that's something that we saw before um, this is a very good link to check out right so like you can just like see um, how like a binary search tree is gonna be um, implemented right so like you can just like insert or delete a node and you can see like how it, it would be kept balanced Right, so like you can see, like this is like a, a very good link to check out to see um, like if your insertion or deletion is done properly. You can double check it like with this um, animation link here. So let's look at these six examples right here. So let's look at this one, right? So what is the height of the left subtree for this leaf it's zero what's the height of the right subtree it's zero right the difference between them is zero okay so this term right the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree we call it a balance factor for every node not the absolute value of it but just like the the actual value the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree we call it a balance we call we call it the balance factor for the node right so for here the balance factor for this node which is the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree is zero okay so the, this has the AVL property for this one the height of the left subtree is zero but the height of the right subtree is one so the balance factor is going to be uh, minus one for this node it's zero for this node the height of the left subtree is two the height of the right subtree is one 
2 minus 1 is 1, so the balance factor is 1. So far, all the nodes have the, <coughs> excuse me, the AVL property. The same thing for this one. The balance factor is 0. For this one, the height of the left subtree is 0. The height of the right subtree is 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Right, still has the AVL property. Now let's look at the root. The height of the left subtree is the like maximum number of edges to a leaf, right? So it's going to be one, two, three. So it's three. And the height of the right subtree is two. Three minus two is one. So you see that for all the nodes, balance factors is either zero, minus one, or one. So this is an example of AVL3. You can double check this for uh, other these other two trees that are given here you can see that like these are also AVL trees um, based on the balance factor that you can calculate you can also like you should like make you should also note that uh, BST uh, AVL trees are supposed to be BST first right so like you see that uh, this is like a binary search tree as well right like um, all the nodes to the left of uh, this node are smaller than the node key and all the nodes on the right subtree have um, the key values greater than the nodes key right and this is true for all the nodes in the tree let's look at this one right here the balance factor for this node it's the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree it's zero minus zero it is zero for this node it's 0 minus 1, it's minus 1. For this node, the height of the left subtree is 1 and 2, 2. The height of the right subtree is 0. Okay, so the balance factor for this node is 2, right? So this 3 is not AVL, right? If like any of the nodes, even one node, doesn't have the AVL property, doesn't uh, satisfy the AVL property this is not an AVL tree and you can see for these two examples that these are also not um, AVL right like you can just like for example find the balance factor for this node or this is not also an AVL you can find the balance factor for the root okay um, you can see that this is a um, AVL tree. This is an AVL tree. It's not complete, but still an AVL tree. It's BSD. It's AVL. This one, it is AVL. This one, it is AVL. Uh, if you have um, like an AVL, like if you have a BSD of height H, uh, height seven, this is like basically this shows that this is a AVL tree of height 7. This is an AVL tree of height H. This is going to be an AVL tree of height 9. Okay, So you can verify that by calculating the balance factor of the nodes. In the AVL tree, the search cost or insertion cost and uh, deletion cost, it's going to be um, like you saw, you saw that in a BST tree, the the cost it's going to be of order of height right and it can be um it can be just like calculated it can be proved that the height of um, bst of going to be of order log and the exact value it's going to be this one but uh, like the proof for that is rather complicated it's beyond the scope of this course right but you can just like know that like for the height of an avl tree it's uh, just always smaller than a constant multiplied by log of n. So it's going to be of big O log n. So the search, insertion, deletion, all of them are going to be order of log n. Okay. And that's why like, we, we want to use AVL3 because it's height balance, right? And make sure that the height is as small as possible for the number of nodes that we have. I already mentioned what a balance factor is. It's basically uh, the height of the left subtree of the node minus the height of its right subtree, right? For an AVL tree, 
um, the balance factor for the nodes can be zero, positive one, or negative one. Uh, if the balance factor is zero, uh, we call that node balanced. If the balance factor is one, right? For example, for this case, right? It's one, right? Because the, uh, the height of the left subtree is one and the height of the right subtree is zero. So the balance factor is one. We call this node left heavy, right? So like you can think of this as a person that has two hands and like, just like it's keep, like it's holding something in its left hand, but nothing on the right hand. So this node, it's called left heavy. If the balance factor is minus one, and we call it right heavy. So for example, for this one, you see that uh, the height of the left sub three is two, but the height of the right sub three is three. So this is a right heavy node. This root is height, right heavy node. Okay. Um, th there are other um, definitions for balance factor. Um, they just like, um, like define it at the height of the uh, left child minus the height of the right child. But um, like the easiest way to calculate balance factor is finding the maximum distance to a leaf in a left subtree in the left subtree minus the maximum distance to a leaf in the right subtree. Okay. Um, now we have to make sure after we insert a node into the BST, it still keeps the AVL property, okay? So in order to do that, we have to do some operation called rotations. So the process for inserting or deleting an element in an AVL tree is exactly the same as what we did in a BST, what you saw in the previous video. However, the difference is that after you do the insertion or deletion, you have to rebalance the tree, okay? You have to do more work to make sure that the uh, tree is still AVL. All the nodes have the AVL property. This is like basically rebalancing the tree, okay? So, once like you insert a node, you have to check all only the nodes like you have to like let's say like you have an AVL tree and you insert a node. You have to check the AVL property of only the nodes on the path from the node that you just inserted upwards towards the root. Right, so you go from the node that you just inserted, you go upwards towards the root and you check the AVL property or the balance factor for all those nodes, right? Um, so then there might be a case, there might be a case that after insertion, the AVL property of, um, the, like the balance factor of a node is either becoming two or negative two, right? So we, we only need to go to the first node. When we go upwards from the inserted node, we only need to find the first node that loses its AVL property. Basically, its balance factor either becomes two or negative two. Right, so here becomes two, this one becomes negative two, right? So um, this is like only for a uh, for insertion. Like for insertion, we only need to go to the first node, which is gonna be the deepest node that loses its um, AVL property. The, the closest node to the inserted node that loses its AVL property, right? And there are gonna be four different cases that after insertion, the, the tree loses its AVL property. So um, here you see that like we had, like let's say originally we had a tree like this, we inserted the node and it went to the left, 
left of this node, right? So here you see that uh, if we calculate the balance factor of this node is zero, the balance factor of this node is one, the balance factor of this node is two, okay? So the if you if you pay attention to this node that lost its AVL property, the first node that lost its AVL property, okay, then look at like where the inserted node is in relation to this one. Right here, like we went left and left. We call this an LL case or left left case, right? Basically, it means that the inserted node it's on the left subtree of the left child of the node that lost its AVL property, right? So this is LL case, okay? In this case, right, we originally had this tree. We inserted this node, went on the right side of uh, this previous leaf, right? So now we have this node. Again, we calculate... Uh, balance factors from here all the way to the root, right? Until we, we until we find the first node that loses its AVL property. So here the balance factor for this one is zero, for this one is minus one, for this one is minus two, right? So this one is basically like you go right, like if if you see like from from the um the node that's lost its AVL property, we went right and then right, right? So this is called right-right case. This is basically the case where the inserted node, it's on the right subtree of the right child of the node that lost its AVL property, okay? These two nodes, uh, these two cases, sorry, these two cases are, are called external cases. They can be rectified. We can rebalance the tree by a single rotation. And we're going to see what that means, like what a single rotation means. Okay. But just keep in mind that LL and RR cases are external cases and they can be uh, rectified, like we can make this AVL balanced again by a single rotation. Now, let's look at this tree, right? Let's say that this is like the tree that we had and it was already AVL. We inserted a node here, right? Again, if we go upwards from this node towards the root and calculate the balance factor of every node, the balance factor for this one is of course zero, for this one is positive one, for this one is what? Negative two, right? Negative two, okay? Um, so here, right, this node loses its uh, AVL property because its balance factor becomes negative two. And if you look at the relationship or the, uh, like the topology of this case, Right, so like the relationship between the inserted node and the node that lost its AVL property here, like you see that we go first right and then left, right? So these, this is going to be called RL or right left case, right? This is right left um, on balance, right? So, um, and you can also like, like the the correct definition for right-left um, on balance means that the inserted node is on the left subtree of the right child of the node that lost its AVL property after insertion. Okay. And finally, the last case, the last unbalanced case, would be. Um, this case that we originally had um, these two nodes in our tree, right? We inserted, um, we inserted the uh, the red node, right? And again, we calculate the balance factor all the way from the inserted node up to the root. Balance factor for the leaf is zero. For this one is negative one or minus one, and for this one is positive two, right? So this node. 
has a balance factor of positive 2 so it, it's losing its uh, uh, AVL property after insertion right and you see that here we go left if we go, if we just like uh, look at the node that's lo that uh, lost its AVL property we go left and then right towards the newly inserted node right so this is called left right case or LR case where the newly inserted node it's on the right subtree of the left child of the node that lost its AVL property uh, you, you see that for uh, these two cases right right and right left the node that loses its AVL property its balance factor becomes minus 2 right uh, for this case, left-left case or left-right case, uh, the node that loses its AVL property, its balance factor becomes positive 2. Okay? So after every insertion, after every insertion, we have to rebalance the tree. We have to make sure that we change these parent-child relationships so that the AVL property would be maintained for every node. Um, for LL and RR case, we can do this by something called a single rotation. For, L, for RL and LR case, we have to do a double rotation. And we're going to see what these are uh, like in this lecture. Again, like this, can summarize the left left case, um, the right right case, uh, the left right case, and the right left case. Okay, they're also like called like by their rotation as well. So like this is also called LL rotation, RR rotation, LR rotation, uh, RL rotation. Okay. Um, one term that we can just like um, define is the pivot node, right? So after insertion, we said that like we check the balance factor for all the nodes f starting from the inserted node, we go upwards towards the root, right? So like we follow the path from, uh, from the newly inserted node towards the root, right? So like just like the path goes from the root to the newly inserted node but we go upwards from the um, from the newly inserted node upwards towards the root okay the the closest node to the newly inserted node that loses its AVL property let's call it pivot right we call it pivot node right there are other variations for this naming convention like here like I just like I'm using the definition that the the like in the in the in, in the path that we go from the newly inserted node upwards towards the node uh, the the root the first node that loses the AVL property we call it the pivot node so it has the smallest depth node that loses the AVL property on the path from the newly inserted node towards the root Okay, restoring the balance of the pivot node restores the balance of the whole subtree and potentially the node becomes AVL. So we only need to make sure that the pivot node would have the correct, correct balance factor. This is only for insertion though, right? Um, so like after like fixing this problem, like for the pivot node, the whole tree becomes uh, balanced again. Right? So the mechanism for restoring the balance of an AVL tree is called rotation. Okay. Um, so again, like this like summarizes what we saw like here. So like outside cases, LLRR, inside cases, LRRL, and um, L, L and RR basically are mirror image of each other and LR and RL are mirror image of each other as well, right? So, um, 
so this is basically like summarizing these four um, rotation cases that we have to do okay what is a rotation right after insertion or deletion like we uh, like this like insertion or deletion operation may cause an imbalance in the AVL tree right and so a rotation is a process of switching children and parents among two or three adjacent nodes to restore balance of a tree. So always remember that rotation is done at most on three nodes. Okay, so like we only consider three nodes from the node that lost its um, <clears throat> its balance factor this balance its avl property right so the balance factor became other two or negative two if we go down towards the newly inserted node we consider those three nodes right we might have like other nodes here like our inserted node might be just below this but we only need to uh, do the rotation on three nodes okay the deepest node, which is an ancestor of a deleted or inserted node and whose balance factor has changed to minus two or positive two, requires rotation to rebalance the tree. So for example, here, right, after inserting, like this is an AVL tree because the balance factor of all nodes are um, like either zero or one, right? So this is, definitely an AVL tree. If we insert 35 here, right, and then we calculate the balance factor, we see that this node loses its AVL property, right? So here, like we have an left-left case, right? This is our pivot, the deepest unbalanced node. You remember the concept of depth, right? This is depth of zero, depth one. Right? So this is the deepest node that lost its AVL property. This is also the root also loses its AVL property, but we don't care. We find the first node that loses its AVL property. If we fix this um, problem for this, for this pivot node, um, consequently the, the AVL property would be also kept for the root as well. Right, so we don't need to do it again for this one. This is only true for insertion. But we're going to see like that for deletion. This is not always the case. Okay. So what do we mean by um, rotation? So like as mentioned earlier, it's basically um, changing the child-parent relationship for three nodes. For three nodes from the pivot um, and the, the next two nodes towards the path to the newly inserted node, these three nodes, we're basically changing the child-parent relationship for these three nodes, okay? So we have two kinds of rotation, single rotation. We either have right rotation or left rotation, okay? right rotation or left rotation. For um, right-left case or left-right case, we're going to do double rotation. So like we have to do a right rotation followed by left rotation or left rotation followed by right rotation. Okay, so you remember that this is a left-left case, right? We go left and left, right? So this is... Um, for like the left left case and right right case uh, like right, which are outside cases right they can be fixed by a single rotation for a left left case for a left left rotation we only need to do one single right rotation right so what does that mean what do we mean by this right so like this is like the pivot right so if you consider this a rope right if you consider this a rope and this is a hinge right right so imagine that we are pulling like we are rotating towards right so we're basically pulling these uh, this rope towards right um uh, like 
like uh, around this edge around this around this hinge right so like basically we moving 45 towards the right 40 is pulled up 35 is pulled up right so this is basically what a single uh, right rotation is right and now let's take a look at the balance factor of every node this is zero this is zero this is zero this is one because the left subtree has the height two and the right subtree is one. And you see that we only fixed the AVL property for this one, but also the AVL property was maintained for the root as well. So like we only needed to go uh, up to the pivot and fix the AVL property by the rotation right, for this uh, pivot. Okay, so, and keep in mind that all the rotations that we have, no matter if it's a single rotation or double rotation, the number of operations that we have to do is like going to be in the order of one, right? Because like we are only doing the child, we're changing the child parent relationships basically for three nodes, right? So whatever it has to be done, it's going to be like a constant number of operations, right? It doesn't depend on the number of nodes that we have in our tree. So at the rotation like uh, cost, it's going to be of big O notation one. Okay, so let's, let's go through examples and see what the rotations are, okay? So let's say that uh, the original tree were, were, uh, was the, the, the one with the blue nodes, right? And then we inserted six, right? So like for the insertion first, like we do exactly the same thing that we did for insertion for any BST, right? Six is bigger than five, six is less than eight, it's smaller than seven, right? And then like we have a null pointer. So like six is going to go to, it's going to be inserted as the left child of seven. Now, if we move upwards from this node towards the root, you see that the balance factor here is zero. For this one is one. For this one is two, right? So this node loses the AVL property. What case is this? the newly inserted node it's on the left subtree of the left child of the node that lost its AVL property or you can see that like we went left and left from this node that lost its AVL property to get to the um, newly inserted node so this is an LL case for an LL rotation we need to do a one single right rotation so what basically means that if again, like imagine that this is a rope, right? We are pulling this down from this point. So eight, it's gonna move down, right, towards right. Seven also moves towards right, it goes up. Six is also move, moved up towards right, right? So then you can see that um, this fixes uh, the AVL property for all the nodes, right? So like here, the balance factor is zero, balance factor is zero, balance factor is zero, and we don't need to check the balance factor for any other nodes, right? We only need to go up to the point that uh, the node lost its AVL property. But you can check that like, it's still like the balance factor for this one is um, also, um, like it's gonna be like one, so it still like has the AVL property. Now let's just start from scratch, right? So like from nothing, we insert three, this is AVL. We insert two, goes on the left, it's AVL. We go, we insert one, right? So it, one is less than three is less than two right there's a null pointer here so one is going to be inserted here now this is the newly inserted node right and we just calculate the balance factor this is zero one two loses avl this is ll rotation so it means that we have to do one single right rotation we rotate this like we pull this down right so three goes here 
two is moved up, right? So like everything is like moving towards right. Two is moved up, one is moved up. So we have this one, okay? So this basically now, the balance factor for all the nodes are zero. So this is an AVL tree, AVL BST. Now we had this one. Now let's insert four. If we insert four, we just like have to calculate the balance factor of all the nodes from this newly inserted node up to the root. Balance factor for this one is zero, for this one is negative one, for this one is negative one. So we don't need to do any rotation. Okay, we don't need to do any rotation here. So this is still AVL. Let's insert five. If we insert five, right? like according to the BST insertion, it's gonna be inserted here. Again, we have to calculate the balance factor for all the nodes from the newly inserted node upwards towards the root. The balance factor for this one is zero, for this one is minus one, for this one is minus two. So this node loses its AVL property, okay? This is a RR case, a right-right case, or RR rotation, right? Why? Because the newly inserted node, it's on the right subtree of the right child of the pivot, or like we go right and then right. So this is an RR case. Again, it's an outside case. For an RR case, which is the mirror image of the left-left case, right? we need to do only one single left, left rotation. Again, imagine that this is a rope, right? And just like we have, like we have fixed like a pin here, right? So like, and the rope goes on top of the pin. And let's imagine that we are pulling this towards left, right? So three is moved towards left, it goes down, right? Four goes up and five goes up. We get to this AVL tree, right? And now like the balance factor for these three nodes are all zero. So this tree is AVL. You see that the rotation is basically changing the child parent re relationship for um, nodes, for some nodes, a constant number of nodes. Okay, so we see that like here two was parent of three and three was parent of four, but now, uh, uh, sorry, like for this case, uh, three was the parent of four and four was the parent of five, but now four becomes parent of three and five, right? So we change the child parent relationship for these three nodes. Let's insert six, okay? So we insert six according to the BST insertion, it's gonna go on the right of five. Six is bigger than two, goes on the right, bigger than four, bigger than five. We have a null pointer, it's gonna be inserted here. Now we have to check the balance factor of all the nodes from here all the way moving upwards toward the root. So the balance factor for this one is zero, for this one is negative one, for this one is one minus two is negative one. For this one is one minus three, it's negative two. So this node loses its AVL property, okay? What case is this now? What case is this now? Okay, so here you can see that the newly inserted node, it's on the right subtree of the right child of the node that lost its AVL property. Or if we're going to go from the node that lost its AVL or the pivot as we called it, we have to go one right and another right. Okay, so like, like the first two moves are going to be right and right. So that's why this is a right right case. So this is a still an outside um, case, but it's a little bit more compli complicated than what we saw before. Okay, why? Because now this node has uh, a left child. So let's see like how we can fix this. Again, right, we have to do uh, a left rotation. Which three nodes do we have to do the left rotation on, right? We do the rotations on three nodes. Which three nodes, right? So 
it's gonna be from the node that lost its AVL property and the next two nodes on the path from this node to the newly inserted node. So it's gonna be on these two, four, and five. Okay, the rotation, in this case, the uh, left rotation, it's gonna be done on these three nodes, two, four, and five, okay? So what do we have to do? We have to just like move these towards left. So again, imagine that this is a rope. This is a rope and there is a pin here, right? And the rope goes on top of it and we are pulling this towards left, right? So let's first ignore this node three, right? Let's imagine that this doesn't exist. Right. If we are pulling this down, like one is going to move here, two it's going to move here, four goes up, five goes up, and six goes up as well. Like every node is moved towards the left. So we would have one here, two here, uh, four here, five here, six here. Okay. Now, um, what's going to happen to three? Three was on the left side of four, right? But now, right, so let me just like show this here. Let me just exit this one, right? So imagine that, uh, imagine that this didn't exist, right? So what we did, we just like pulled, we pulled this one down towards left, this one down towards left, this one goes up, uh, sorry, this one goes up. This one goes up and this one goes up, right? I'm sorry, like I don't do the edges, right? So that this is like what we have. Now, four is the, now the parent of two and five, but three was previously left child of four, okay? So it still has to be on the left side of four. So it's gonna be moved to the left sub three of four and it's gonna become the, um, right child of two as we see here so let's just like go back to what we had here okay so in order to understand this again like imagine the same example that we had like we have a rope here and we have a pin the rope goes on top of it right and this rope has like another rope attached to it here right as you pull this towards left this edge it's now going to move towards the left side of this pin right so you pull this towards left as you do a rotation a left rotation this edge it's now going to be on the other side so that's why like you see that this edge goes on the other side so that's why three becomes the right child of two Right now we fix the AVL property of the nodes, right? So sorry. Um, sorry, I don't know why this happened. Like I have to go back to where we were. We're here, I think. Yes. So now we fix the um, we fix this case, right? So now this is AVL, right? AVL balance. Now let's insert seven, right? Again, we calculate balance factor. This is zero, this is negative one, this is negative two. This loses its AVL property. It's a right, right case. We only need to do a single ref left rotation. So five, it's gonna move towards left, right? It's gonna be pulled down. Six goes up, seven goes up. So we end up with this uh, full BST after the rotation after a single left rotation okay let's insert now uh, 16 first if we insert 16 16 is bigger than 4 bigger than 6 bigger than uh, greater than 7 right and there's a empty pointer here no pointer here so 16 is going to go on the right side of the 7 it's going to become the right child of 7 right um, if 
before inserting 15 if we calculate the balance factor of all the nodes from newly inserted node all the way to the root balance factor for this one would be zero for this one would be minus one for this one would be again minus one for this one would be two minus three is still like minus one so after inserting 16 the a build property is still kept now let's insert 15 Again, like we do like insertion like we do for any BST, right? So this is bigger than 4, 15 is greater than 4, greater than 6, greater than 7, smaller than 16, and we have an empty pointer, so it's going to be inserted as the left child of 15. Now we have to calculate the balance factor of every node starting from here all the way up towards the, node, uh, the root until we find a node that it loses its avial property. The balance factor for this one is zero, for this one is positive one, for this one is the left subtree, the height of the left subtree is zero, the height of the right subtree is two, so for this one is negative two, right? So this node loses its avial property. Which case is this? You can see that from the pivot, we have to go one right and one left to get to the newly inserted node. Or the newly inserted node is on the left subtree of the right child of the pivot, right? So this is a right-left case. Okay, so for a right-left case, maybe I should do it um, here. So for a right-left case, or for a left-right case, we have to do double rotation, okay? RL, we have to do a right rotation, a left rotation. For LR, we have to do a left rotation, a right rotation, okay? So this is an RL case. So first, we are gonna just turn this into a RR case. How do we do it? We do rotation for these two nodes. Okay, so imagine that this is, uh, again, a rope, but this part, let's imagine that this is elastic, right? So here for an RL case, first we are gonna do a right rotation for these two nodes around this node. So we're gonna pull this down as we pull this one down, this is going to move up here. So like we did right rotation for these two nodes, right? So we end up with this case, right? So now this is still not AVL, Like right? After this rotation, like we only did one single rotation, right? So this is not, this is not AVL, right? But now we know how to fix this one, right? So now what we have to do, this is like now an RR case, right? This is our pivot. So we basically have to pull this down, move this on up, move this one up, right? So for an, uh, again, like I made this mistake, sorry. For an, RL case, we have to do double rotation, so it would be RL rotation. First, rotate around this node towards right, and then do a left rotation around this node. And then we get to this AVL3. Again, you can see that the balance factor for this one is zero. We don't need to check the balance factor for any other node. Okay, so after this, this is only for insertion though. After this, after we check the balance factor, after like doing the double rotation, this is going to become um, like about the balance factor of this is becoming zero. So like we know that this is an AVL tree. Let's insert 14. Let's insert 14. Okay. Um, or actually, let's just like um, like go back to this one. There is a shortcut if you want to do um, an RL case or LR case, there is a shortcut, right? So basically, like you remember that here, like any rotation is changing the child-parent relationship, right? So here, 
right? So like we found the node that lost its AVL, right? We knew we know that like we have to do rotation for these three nodes, right? The the pivot and the next two nodes towards the newly inserted node, which here like is 15, right? So what we basically have to do, right? Right? If you if you just like want to do this quickly and figure out like how your um, how to rebalance the tree, it's ba basically this node it's gonna be jumped up, right? And this is an R L case. This is gonna be moved towards left, right? So this is um, like just one easy way to figure out um, how to balance this one. This node is gonna be jumped up. Right, and the previous pivot is going to become the left. It's going to move towards the left of it. Okay, so okay, so this is what we have here. Okay, now let's insert fourteen. Fourteen is greater than four, greater than six, smaller than fifteen, greater than seven. So it goes on the right side of seven. Okay. Uh, now this is let's again like calculate the balance factor starting from the newly inserted node okay all the way up to the root balance factor for this one is zero balance factor for this one is negative one for this one is positive one for this one is one minus three so for this one is minus two this node loses its AVL property. This node loses its AVL property. Now you guys like think about this, like what case is this? Is it LL, RR, RL or LR? Okay, so if you think about it, the newly inserted node is on the left subtree of the right child of the node that lost its AVL property, the pivot, right? So it's an RL case. Or you can think that like if like from the pivot, if we want to have like, if you want to go towards the newly inserted node, the first two moves that we have to do is right and left. So this is an RL case. What is the rotation for an RL rotation? A double rotation and right rotation then a left rotation okay this is going to be uh, more challenging than the previous case though the previous rl right because here like you see that 15 has a child okay first of all which three nodes should we do rotations on so always remember starting from the pivot all the way do down the next two nodes in the path from the pivot towards the newly inserted node so like we have to do rotation on 6 15 and 7 6 15 and 7 okay um, so let's forget about the jumping for now okay so um, so here like we have to do the double rotation on these three nodes okay so first of all we have to do a right rotation around this node the middle node right so we basically what we have to do just like we have to move the this one towards uh, right and move this one towards right as well Right, so like here, right, so just like 15 is going to move down, right, and 7, it's going to move up, okay. So then 7, 15, 16 was the right child of uh, 15, so it's still going to remain right child of 15, okay. Now, what happens to 14? 14 was on the right side of 7, was on the right subtree of 7, okay? Cannot be here, right? Again, remember that when we did this rotation around this node, there was an edge here. So like when we do this rotation, the edge is going to move towards the other side, 
right so when we do here so remember that 14 is still gonna be uh, on the right subtree of 7 so now it can become the left child of 15 okay so we, we had to do double rotation we did one of them we did one of them right but the the this node is still has the same balance factor as before, right? It has a minus two balance factor, right? Because we only did one rotation. What's the next thing that we have to do? The next thing we have to do, we did a right rotation. It's an RL case. We did a right rotation. Now we have to do a left rotation, okay? So we have to do a left rotation. So what's like, what three nodes did we do rotations on? right it was 6 7 and 15 right so like it was 6 like let me just like go back to what we had here like you're doing the rotations on 6 7 and 15 right so like here like this is like where we are right now okay so we still have to do now a left rotation around this node for 6, 7, and 15. So left rotation, it means like this is going to move to the left. This is going to move towards left. This is going to move towards left. This is going to go up. And this is going to still becoming like it's going to be the left and right child of here. Just like you can see, this is now what we end up at, right? So after this double rotation, like balance factor of this one, if you look, look at it, it's going to be zero. Right. So after double rotation, uh, we maintained the AVL property of the pivot. So now this is done. Okay. So let me go back to the original uh, problem that we had here. Okay. Um, another way to fix this. Another way to like find like what are uh, AVL uh, tree is gonna look like after the RL rotation as I mentioned like here we have 6 15 and 7 that we have to do rotations on right so uh, as I mentioned in the previous case as a shortcut you can just like like see that okay we, we just like have to make this one uh, the new parent like so like this one has to jump up Right. If you just like want to figure out like very quickly how your uh, balanced AVL tree is going to look like after double rotation. So like what we have to do. I'm um, sorry. Let's, let me just like remove this one. So we just basically have to move uh, move this one up. Right. Move this one up. And then it's an RL case. So this node 6 it's going to become the left child of 6 now uh, 7 now so like this is going to move down this is going to move down so this comes here right so we have 7 6 and 5 now 14 was on the right side of 7 it still has to be on the right side of 7 so it's going to become the left child of 15 right so this is just like a trick to quickly figure out how your balanced AVR3 is going to look like after a double RL rotation. Okay, let's go to the next one. We insert 13, right? 13 greater than 4, greater than 7, smaller than 15, smaller than 14. We have a, a null pointer, so it's going to be inserted here. We have to calculate the balance factor for all the nodes starting from here all the way up to the root. 0, 1, 1. For this one is 2 minus 3 is minus 1. For the root is 2 minus 4. So the root loses the AVL property. What case is this? Is it RR, LL, RL, or LR? Okay, so again, now this is our pivot. This is the deepest node that lost its AVL property, right? If we move, if we have a path from this node to the newly inserted node, this path, right? What are the first two moves that we have to take? 
right and right. So this is a simple RR case, right? This is a simple RR case. Or you can see that 13 is on the right subtree of the right child of the deepest node that lost its AVL property, or it's on the right subtree of the right child of pivot. Okay. So this is an RR case. It's an outside case. For an RR case, how do we rectify it? How do we, what's the rotation? It's just like a single ref rotation. So what we basically have to do, it's just like, uh, like, so like, let me just like do this one, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm just like moving them towards left. This one, it's going to move up. Okay. It's going to move up, right? 15 is going to move up as well, right? So just like, let me just remove these ones, right? 16, uh, 16 is going to move here and, um, right? So, and 14 and just like ignore these two for now 14 was the left child of 15 and 13 was the left child of 13 and this is what we have now okay now six and five were connected right five was on the left side of six and they were the left sub three they were on the left sub three of seven they still has to be on the left side of seven Right, so this is the case where you're pulling the rope. The rope has an edge on this side. This edge is now going to be on um, the left subtree of the new node. So where does six and five go? Right, so six is going to become the right child of five. And let me just like move this one slightly here. And five, it's going to be still the left child of it. Right, so like this is like the new um uh, balanced avl3 that we have right so you see that uh, this is basically the process for an rr uh, case it's just like a single left rotation okay i can't go any further just like i messed it up um but that this is basically how it is done. Like, let's go to the next case. We insert 12. We insert 12, right? Um, it's going to be inserted here. The balance factor is 0. Balance factor is 1. Balance factor is 2. We stop right here. This is our pivot. This is a very simple left-left case. What do we have to do? We just, like, have to basically pull this down towards, like, we have to do a right rotation. This goes up here. And this goes up here. So that's how we can just like make the tree balanced, right? Now this is balanced. The next case is this one, right? Um, so for for this one, we are inserting 11, right? 11 is greater than 7, is smaller than 15, is smaller than 13, is smaller than 12. It's going to be inserted on the left as the left child of 12. Calculate the balance factor 0, 1, one, two. This one loses its AVL property. What case is this? Right? Right? We just like do a left and left, right? From the pivot to get to the newly inserted node, we go left, left. Which three nodes do we have to do rotations on? Only 15, 13, and 12. Okay? What's the rotation? A single right rotation because it's an LL case. Right. So again, what do we have to do here? We just like so like we have to just like move 15, 13 and 12 towards right. So 15 is going to move down towards right and 16 is also going to move down here. So this is what we have. OK. 13, it's going to go up. 12, it's going to go up. 11 is going to go up. What's going to happen to 14? Right. So here. Now, 13, 14 was on the right sub 3 of 13, right? Still has to be on the right side of 13, right? This is the case that when you're pulling the string, 
the string had an edge on this side when we're pulling it this way like the edge goes on this side so now 14 becomes the left child of 15 so that's how we fix the problem insert 10 right I don't do this one because this is a very simple LL case just like a right rotation it's going to fix the problem now insert 8 once we insert 8 right it's going to go here let's forget about 8 let's forget about 9 sorry balance factor for this one after inserting 8 is 0 for this one is 1 for this one is also 1 for this one is also 1 and for this one is 3 minus 4 it's minus 1 so after inserting 8 the trees is still AVL okay insert 9 right so 9 is gonna go on the right side of 8 right balance factor 0 balance factor is minus 1 balance factor is positive 2 right this is a LR rotation this is a left right case right and we just like have to do a simple double rotation first a left rotation so we just like around eight we just like pulling this one down like this goes up right and then a right rotation around 10 like 10 goes here 9 goes here 8 goes here or as like if you want to quickly figure out what you have to do just like you just like basically this one jumps up and it's a left right case so this previous um, pivot is now going to move towards the right of 9 so that's how the problem is going to be fixed let's just like forget about this one right so like we saw all different four rotations here this is another example let's say that we have this AVL tree we insert 5 after inserting 5 it's still AVL right balance factor for this one 0 for this one is positive 1 for this one is 0 still AVL right insert 45 um, should say 45 why does it say four? it should uh, insert 40 sorry insert 40 okay so insert 40 um, then balance factor for this one is zero for this one is minus one for this one is also minus one for this one is two minus three is still minus one still AVL balanced right so like we don't have to do anything now insert 45 insert 45 it's going to go on the right um, sub 3 of 40 balance factor 0 minus 1 minus 2 loses its AVL property right what case is this like we don't care about the other nodes after we find the pivot we don't care about the other nodes our, our case what do we have to do a single left rotation after a single left rotation for these three nodes 35 is going to move towards left 40 goes up 45 goes up we end up with this one now insert 34 it's going to be inserted here balance factor 0 balance factor 1 balance factor 1 balance factor 1 minus 3 1 minus 3 so this one loses its ABL property what case is this this is our pivot what case is this from the path from pivot to the newly inserted node we go one right and then a left so this is an RL rotation a right left rotation okay um, <clears throat> basically the newly inserted node is the left is on the left sub tree of the right child of the pivot okay what do we have to do for a um, RL rotation we have to do a double right and then left rotation okay a right and left rotation okay what three nodes should we do rotations on from the pivot the next two nodes in the path towards the from the pivot towards the newly inserted node so it would be on 30 40 and 35 okay so what do we have to do first we just like basically have to do like like if you think about this like we have to do um, a right 
rotation first around this eight is this node so this is going to move down like this goes here 35 goes here like 34 goes here so this is what we have now still this the bf or balance factor for this one is a still minus two right because we only did one rotation now we have to do another left rotation for these three nodes around this node so we're pulling this rope towards left this is gonna move towards left let's just like remove this one like this one 30 is gonna move towards let's just like remove this one sorry uh, 35 it's going to move here, right? 40 is going to move up. 45, uh, sorry, 45, it's going to move up, right? Now, 34 was on the left side of 35. As you pull this string towards left, right? This edge, it's going to move towards the left side of 35 as well. So like here, like basically uh, 34 becomes the right child of 30. Okay, so this is what we end up. There are another example. Um, not gonna spend too much time on these ones, like, but you can follow uh, these examples yourself. Okay, another example here shows like a single rotation, shows a double rotation. Okay, um, and the rotation big o the big o, uh, big o of rotation it's gonna be like the, the number of operations that we have to do for insertion like f like for rotation doesn't matter if it's single or double it's constant right so to make the tree balanced the binary search tree balanced after um after insertion or deletion, we have to do rotation. That rotation, it takes a constant number of operations. So it's like big O of on, uh, of one, sorry. Uh, so therefore, um, like we saw that for BST, insertion, um, deletion, and um, search is always of the big O of height, right? The, if the tree is balanced, if the tree is balanced, it's going to be of big O of log n, right? So the the insertion, right? After we do the insertion, it's going to be big O of log, log n, right? And we, we have to do like a constant number of operations to rebalance the tree. So that one is going to be order of one. So still insertion and deletion for AVL, it's going to be of big O of log n. The rebalancing is not going to change the uh, big O notation of insertion and deletion, right? So this is uh, the beauty of ABL tree, right? So like a constant number of operations, uh, we, we make sure that uh, the height of the tree is maintained uh, minimum, right? It's like going to be log in the order of log n, okay? So as a practice, like I ask you to do, um, like basically start from nothing, start from scratch, insert three, two, one, four, one, four, five, six, seven, sixteen, fifteen, and fourteen, and see, like how you can uh, maintain the tree AVL balanced. Okay, and this is a summary of left left case, left right case, right right case, and right left case. Okay. Um, now. The implementation of this, okay, so just a warning that to implement the insertion uh, of an AVL for AVL tree, this is probably one of the most difficult algorithms that you have seen so far. So you have to understand first how the rotation works and then you just like you have to take your time. It takes a lot of uh, thought and time to implement it so like don't give up like if you don't understand it the first time just gonna might take like a couple of iterations like it might like take like more iterations like for you to just like go over review all the uh, lecture top lecture material and then do the implementation it's not an easy topic okay uh, so don't give up like if if you don't understand it the first time 
So some observations that we can make, it's just like adding a new node can change the balance factor of any node by at most one, right? So this is very obvious. If you insert a new node, the balance factor of any node can change at most by one, right? If it's zero can become like one or negative one. If it's one can become either two or zero. If it's negative one, it can become like zero or negative two. Uh, just like if a node currently is balanced, it doesn't go out of balance because like after inserting a node, uh, its balance factor either becomes one or negative one. If a node it's left heavy, right? Um, left heavy means that its balance factor is positive one, right? Then it might, it might uh, go out of balance might go out of balance right so and if it's right heavy it might also like go out of balance okay if a node is left heavy then in the in the insertion takes place it's in right subtree it doesn't go out of balance right um, only like it goes out of balance that insertion happens on its left side so basically the left side gets more heavier that gets heavier sorry um, and it like it doesn't like uh, like if if the ins like if it's left heavy an insertion takes place in its right subtree it doesn't go out of balance it doesn't affect the nodes um, higher than it right so uh, this this is like some observations that we can make okay so here this is one algorithm for implementing AVL insertion there are other variations for this algorithm, okay? Um, but just like remember that here, like we're gonna have again like a recursive algorithm, okay? So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go over it, but like when I wanna implement it, I'm gonna use another algorithm that we'll see later. So first, first we have to do a BST insertion. Right, so find a place to insert the new key right while descending the tree. Remember the last node. Remember the last node having the balance factor minus one or positive one. Right? Because these these are these are the nodes that might go out of balance. Okay. Um, if the key is already there, return. So like it's just like basically like here, like we assume that like we have like unique elements here otherwise we insert the new key right so otherwise we insert the new key so like this is basically doing the insertion for a bst but just the only thing is that like we remember like we basically store the last node that have the balance factor minus one or positive one because this is the one that can go out of balance okay let's call this a okay um if if there is no a it means like if all the nodes have balance factor of zero, then go down the path from the root to the new key balance again, updating balance factors and then return, right? So we just like here, like when we do a AVL tree, right? So we, in addition to the root pointer that we have, we also like for every node, we also need to have another member variable we either like keep the height of the node or we keep its balance factor right so here it just like basically like we, we just like update the balance factor for all the nodes like from the newly inserted node upwards towards the uh, root okay um go back to a if it had balance factor of positive one and key went to its right sub three right if it had balance factor of one and key went if a had the balance factor of one and key like it means like the newly inserted node went to its right sub three so this was left heavy and the key went to its right sub three or if it had balance factor of negative one it means like it was right heavy and the key went in, into its left subtree, right? Then it means the balance factor of A is going to become zero. 
right so this this is not gonna make the <clears throat> it's not gonna make the tree uh, unbalanced so fix the bf values on the path from a to the new key and return right so like from the node that had the balance factor of negative one or positive one for this case update the balance factor of that node to zero go all the way down from that node A to the newly inserted node and update the balance factor of every node. Okay. Otherwise, if it A had balance factor of one, if it was left heavy and the key went to its left subtree, now it's gonna get the left side is gonna get heavier. So like it, this is a left left rotation so what do we have or, or it can be also a left right rotation right so it can be a left left rotation or a left right rotation depending upon whether the key went to in the left or right subtree of um, a's left child okay a's left child like this is like better to be left child and uh, like here like it's better to be right Right. So we, we have to implement a function for uh, rotation, right? So we just like have to do uh, like for LL rotation, we do have we have to have to do a single right rotation. For LR, we have to do a double left and right rotation. For an RR case, we have to do a left rotation, single left rotation. For RL, we have to do a double r l rotation okay so in addition to the insertion function we have we need to have like two help functions a left rotation a right rotation okay if we want to do if we have uh, an l l rotation we do just like a one single right rotation if we have an l r we call the left rotation function and then the right rotation function Okay, and then we also have to fix the B after like doing the rotations, we have to fix the BF values of the nodes that were involved in the rotation. Okay, and correct the BF uh, balance factor values of the nodes on the path from the A to the new key. Not only the three nodes that they were involved in the rotation, we also have to correct the balance factor values of the nodes from the path towards the new key. This is one way of implementing the insertion, okay? Just like go over it like very carefully, okay? So go over it very carefully, try to understand the algorithm. Um, I'm gonna show you another algorithm for insertion as well um, later on. So, okay. So in the AVL3 node, Right. In addition to all the member functions we had, right, we need to have, uh, like, in addition to also, like, like let's say, like, if it's a link reference, we also had the um, a root, right? We had the root uh, pointer, right? We also have to have another uh, member variable for uh, every node. Okay. So that that. Um, variable member variable can be the height of the node or can be the balance factor of the node in this implementation we picked the balance factor as the member variable or it can be the height of the node okay so in the implementation that we have if let's say that we have the linked uh, linked um, representation, the dynamic representation. This is like what we use for AVL trees. So in addition to the left pointer and right pointer and the key that we have in the structure that we have, we also have, we also keep either the balance factor, it should be the balance factor, or the height of the node. So in the structure that we have for every node, we have an additional member variable, okay? In the structure that we have for a node, we have to have another variable. This either can be the balance factor or height. In the previous implementation, it was balance factor. In the one that we see here, it's gonna be the height. Okay, we can keep either the height of the node or the balance factor. 
okay um, just keep in mind that in insertion once you have the performed a rotation you won't need to go back up the tree right so like after like we fix the uh, the pivot and like what was below it like in the path from the pivot towards the newly inserted node we know we don't need to go up right okay this implementation it's a recursive implementation okay so um, like when it says the current node it means like the the like in the node that you are right now at it's like uh, like uh, the recursive call you're right now at right because we're going to be at like many recursive calls for like different nodes so the current node it means like the the node uh, at the recursive call that you're at right now so the first thing that we have to do is like performing the normal uh, BST insertion okay perform the normal BST insertion like we saw that in the previous video okay um, the current node must be one of the ancestors of the newly inserted node okay so um, like we start like let's say like if we start from uh, from the root right we just like have the path towards the newly inserted node the, the current node it's the one of the ancestors of the newly inserted node so we have to update the height of the current node get the balance factor right the balance factor it's going to be the height of the left child of the node minus the height of the right child of the node or the left subtree height minus the right subtree if the balance factor is greater than one then the current node is unbalanced and we are either in the left left case or a left right case right so like if the balance factor is two we are either in the left left case or a left right case okay to check whether it's left left case or right left right case we, we just like have to compare the value of the newly inserted node with the key in the left subtree root okay so we basically just like have to because like it's left left or left right so we just like have to compare the value of the newly inserted node with um, the with the basically the pivots left child okay so like we just like have to make that comparison and we figure out if we are in the left left case or left right case once we figure out if we are in the left left case or left right case then we just like have another functions that we can call for uh, either like a single right rotation or a double left right rotation and similarly the case like where for the case that we have a, a, a right heavy case right so if a balance factor is less than one the current node is unbalanced we're either in the right right case or right left case we can figure out which one that it is and then uh, we call um, another function for rotation to rectify the problem okay so uh, what is a right right rotate uh, what is a right rotation so this is like what like a single right rotation is so you see that if we have originally this tree right right if this is um, the let's say like the current node this is if this is our current node like basically this is our root right for this case for this subtree so after the right rotation right we're gonna end up with uh, uh, with this case right so like here like t3 t1 and t2 are sub trees so after the right rotation right um, y is moved towards right x is moved towards right okay t1 is a still left child of left sub tree of x but t2 is going to become the left sub tree of y Right, so this edge is gonna move toward the other side, okay? And two trees is still the right subtree of Y. So this is the case for a right rotation. So again, you can just try to implement it yourself, right? But it this is just basically just like changing the pointers. Like we are just like basically changing the 
pointers like you can see that like how this is done try to do it yourself if you have problem figuring out like how to do it like and you can take a look at this one okay but after we do this we just have to make sure to update the heights as well right so let's say that like we have another function that finds the maximum number between two things so like we just like have to update the height of the nodes as well okay so this is like a right rotation and similarly we're gonna have a left rotation like for a left rotation like if this is like the tree that we have if this is our current node we just basically pull t1 down x goes down y goes up t3 goes up and t2 becomes the right subtree of x right so again it's going to be pointer manipulation you see it here okay just like have to after like changing the pointers we just like have to update the height okay um you can just like uh, like for the implementation like i'm not supposed to provide you the implementation like you're supposed to do it here but like i'm providing it just in case like you get stuck so that you can get some help but like first please do it yourself like do it yourself like uh, don't look at the solution just try to do it yourself and then if you get stuck you can just like get some help okay and this is the complete insertion algorithm for an AVL tree okay so as I mentioned earlier it's not necessarily an easy algorithm you might have to go through it multiple times right we in addition to the insert um, function that's a um, just like just like the function that does the insertion and it's a recursive function right um, in addition to this in addition to this we might we have like some help function to find the height of a node right um, okay so or like we have like um, if if this is not uh, yeah so the height sorry the height of a subtree or the height of a tree right sorry not the height of a node the height of a tree uh, to find the maximum number between two numbers um, to get the balance factor right and just another function to create a new node okay so just like to create a new node this is another function that we have so just like the helper function that allocates a new node with the given key and a null left and right pointer okay so just like basically like it creates a new node okay so the process that we have to do is just like this one is similar to what we saw in the previous video it's just like uh, normal BST insertion this is like normal BST insertion it's a recursive function that's why it's like it's recursive right we do uh, recursive um, calls to insert the BST right um, so after we do this after we do the insertion we have to update the height of the ancestor node like so once this is done we go back up to the to the ancestor nodes right through the like recursion like once we return from the recursion once we return we go back up to the current node so we update the height of this one right get the balance factor and we check we check which case we are in depending on the balance factor if balance factor is bigger than one right um, right we are either in the left left case or left right case so we just like have to uh, in the left left case in the left left case we just have to do a single right rotation right so like here like this is like how you can also figure out if it's a left left case or a left r right case if you're in the right right case we only have to do a left single left rotation if it's a left right case okay um, we have to do um, a, a left right rotation so you see like here we do a left rotation and then a right rotation okay so we call the left rotation function that we saw here and then the right rotation function that we saw here 
and finally if it's a right left case we do a right rotation and then a left rotation okay and this is basically how you can implement the insertion as i mentioned this is probably the most challenging algorithm that you have seen so far in this course so be a little bit patient just try to understand it try to do it on the paper yourself first and then once you get stuck you can just like get some help from the implementation that's provided here okay now we talked about how to insert a node in an avl tree we also have to talk about how to delete a node from an avl tree and maintain the avl property for the tree okay so it's very similar to what we did for insertion so first we delete the node similar to the way that we did for a binary search tree right so like we saw that how we can delete a node in a binary search tree you remember there were three cases if it was a leaf if it had one child if it had two children right so we we, we rewrite the same thing right here right once you delete right then you just like again like from the node that got uh, deleted you just like have to go upward and like find uh, the node that loses its um, AVL property you have to rebalance the node now deletion for AVL tree is more challenging than insertion because we said that for the insertion as soon as you fix the problem for the pivot right then we don't need to go upwards toward the root anymore right but for deletion the imbalance may propagate upwards okay that many rotations that need it right so even if you find the the deepest node that loses its avl property and you fix that one by the rotation right you still need to go upwards toward the root and check all the other nodes balance factor and see if they need rotation as well okay deletions are more complicated than insertion um, there might be like this many rotations needed because as like as many as much as the height of the tree is right it's log of n right so you might need to have this many rotations like usually it's less than that but it might be up to this one okay um, avl balancing is not very computationally efficient uh, better balance search trees are red black aa trees and b trees right it's like um, re rebalancing avl is more difficult i chose avl because like like even red black tree is like like believe it or not i think in my opinion is more challenging than avl like to to write the algorithm right so avl um like among the height balance trees i think it's like the easiest um um like balancing technique that we can have for bsts right but it's not computationally efficient okay. now you can see like why like this like through an example it shows that like okay so here like if we remove x right we end up with abc we can just like rebalance it using a simple single left rotation we end up with this one but let's imagine that here like we um here like in this case we want to <clears throat> uh, delete x like we delete x like here x is deleted right so like we fix this one like this is going to be the pivot now like we have an rr case we rebalance this one b is going to move here a goes here c goes here okay now still we have to go upwards towards the root what's the balance factor for e right the balance factor for e it's going to be two minus one two three four it's going to be minus two so we still have to do uh, rotation for this node and then it would be b and uh, let's say a okay so we still have to do a rotation here okay so the algorithm again like I, I provide two algorithms here so delete a node x in ordinary ordinary binary search tree 
as we did in the previous video then trace the path from the new leaf the new leaf that you have towards the root for each node that you encounter check if the height of the left and right subtree differ by one if yes uh, proceed to parent right if sorry if it doesn't right if it doesn't like it just like proceed to the parent if not you have to perform an appropriate rotation okay you have to do perform uh, the appropriate rotation similar to what we did for the uh, uh, for the um, insertion but the, the problem is that like we don't stop just at the pivot we just like have to go up towards the root okay so we have to perform rotation at some ancestors of excess we must continue to trace the path until we reach the root okay at each node we like you have to determine the new balance factor and we just like have to update the balance factor uh, like or update the height and if the node is unbalanced we have to perform one of the four rotation if we reach a node whose height ends up the same as it was before the deletion then the balance factor of its ancestor will also keep their old values and the deletion operation is complete so if you get to a node that its height didn't change after deletion right then you can stop the process if the if you reach the root and rebalance it we also like the, the deletion operation is also complete Okay. Another algorithm which is similar to the algorithm for insertion that we implemented, right? Um, so perform the normal BST deletion. Okay. Um, just like keep in mind because we are doing recursive BST, right? Because we are doing delete up uh, delete function recursively, this propagation upwards towards the root. Right, and checking all the um, all the nodes in the path from the new leaf towards the root, it's going to be done automatically. It's going to be done automatically because we have recursive calls. So we don't need like parent pointer to travel up. We just like the recursive code itself um, travels up and visits all the ancestors of the deleted node. Okay, so this is like one of the advantages of uh, the recursive call recursive function so we perform the BST deletion the current node right the current node like means like the node at which we are for in the the, the node that uh, the pointer for the recursive call is pointing to at, at this recursive call must be one of the ancestors of the deleted node update the height of this node get the balance factor and then we just like do exactly what we did for insertion. If the balance factor is greater than one, then the current node is unbalanced. We just like have to figure out if you are in the left left case or left right case. Okay, we just like check the check that we just like uh, comparing the value of the um, just like if just like we just like get the balance factor of the left left child of this current node. And the balance factor of the um, right child and like by doing that we just like can figure out if you are in the left left case or left right case I'm not gonna go through this in detail I just want you to try this yourself like even before looking at this algorithm try to come up with an algorithm yourself uh, but then if a balance factor is minus one it means that we have a right heavy case so the current node is definitely unbalanced Right, is if it's like it's minus two, we just like have a right heavy case. We are either in the right right case or right left case to check whether it's right right case or right left case. We get the balance factor of the right subtree. If the balance factor of the right subtree is smaller than or equal to zero, then it's right right case. Otherwise, it's a right left case. You can draw this and like uh, figure out why this is the case. Uh, this is um, the the function for the deletion operation again you can see that we have some help functions to find the minimum value node okay so like why do we need this right because you remember that for uh, deleting in a BST we either have to find the successor of the node or predecessor of the node right so like here 
uh, like we are like using I think like we are using the successor right so like that's why like we want to find the minimum value right so uh, or like you can also use the predecessor right so like here the first part the first part is like what we saw in the previous video it's just like performing a standard deletion right okay so uh, this is like basically uh, finding right finding the node that has to be deleted like figuring out like how many children it has right and then if it has zero or one child like we just like basically do it very easily if it has two child we have to um, uh, swap the values and then delete the, the 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 predecessor or successor okay so uh, this is what we did in in the previous video we deleted a node in a BST now in the ABL tree we also have to do rotations to keep it balanced okay so we update the height of the node the current node that we are at right we uh, we find the balance factor and then we figure out if a rotation is needed Right, so like we figure out if if we are in the left left case, left right case, right right case, right left case, okay, and we just like call the left rotation or right rotation rotate uh, functions that we had before. In the left left case, you just like basically have to do one single right rotation. In a left right case, you have to do a left a double left right rotation. In right right case a single left rotation and in a right left case a double right left rotation okay um, this is an exercise question that I want you to implement yourself so implement a full AVL tree class right so have the structure for the nodes have the AVL tree class with like the constructor destructor and all the uh, member functions that it would be necessary for a BST tree for an AVL BST tree and then you also have to implement the insertion and deletion functions as we did before okay uh, so you can either use the this algorithm or this algorithm like I provided two different algorithms so in in the in the structure for the node you can either use height or balance factor Okay, so here we used height, you can use balance factor as another member variable for your node structure. And uh, so once you implement the insertion and deletion function, uh, you do, uh, you insert this sequence of numbers in your tree, right? And then delete them, right? And um, after each insertion, write the pre-order display the pre-order post-order and in-order tree traverse also also like i want you to implement pre-order post-order and in order which are very easy like th these are very short recursive functions okay so as a summary um balanced trees demonstrate superior performance to binary search tree due to log n tree depth and all dictionary operations can be performed in big O notation of log n in the worst case using ABL tree. Rotation are used as a typical mechanism to restore balance and balance trees are used in lookup intensive applications, right? Because we maintain the height minimum. And like it's like and like it's a balanced search tree as it's a binary search tree as well. So it's like full order. Advantage search is big O notation of log n. Insertion and deletion also like big O notation log n. The height balancing adds no more than a constant factor to speed of insertion and deletion. Disadvantage it's difficult to program and debug. More space for balance factor. So you see that like for every node, we have to have another variable, right? Either balance factor or height. Symptotically faster, but rebalancing costs time right so like it's just like it's a it's a constant time but it costs time and uh, most large searches might are done in database system on disk and they use other structures like p3s that you might see in your future courses okay uh, that's it for this video
sorry that this was too long thank you so much have a nice day